Hello, this is Janne Kegger of Yamaha Bonsai Studio and welcome to another episode of the Bonsai Academy. Today we're going to work on this beautiful Kishu Juniper that has a quite a special story. Uh, because I have acquired two of these and they are like siblings, uh, I have acquired this one and another one that I will show you later and that's already styled. Um, I acquired these because they were Finnish trees in Japan and quite famous one or one was quite famous and the owner never wanted to sell it but he sells sold it eventually. And these are acquired uh, from Marta at Bonsai Plaza in the Netherlands. And I like to have a challenge. So this tree is quite a challenge because here you have beautiful movement and the tree is quite dramatical and the dead wood is quite dramatical as well. Here you see a live vein and here as well. And here you see the two live veins better. So most of the times you would choose this as the front. Um, but there is a thing, the tree doesn't really have back branches and what I would like to make out of this one is not a traditional kind of styling but something that's uh, more uh, natural like I visited America last year in June and in Los Angeles they have Monterey cypresses and they go with the flow of the wind and they have a lot of dead wood and very nicely shaped cloud branches and it's quite nice so in this tree, I see the tree that I saw there in nature and that's quite impressive for me as well. So what we're going to do is we'll start working this tree and I will first tear this branch more down, maybe split it a little bit because I would like to see the best movement in the tree and I want to make a picture frame out of it. So this will be the first branch that we will bend this one down. And why will I choose this side as the front? Because here we have a beautiful nice vein, beautiful deadwood and more, a more dramatical image than this side, as you can see. This is the sibling of the same Kishu juniper that I showed you before. And this was quite a famous tree in Japan with a live vein, a big live vein over here and a bigger live vein here as well. And unfortunately, the tree was higher and more beautiful, but something happened at the owner's place and it died. So it was quite challenging to make something beautiful out of this tree. Uh, what we've done first was we cleaned the dead wood, we sandblasted it a little bit to create this beautiful tree with a lot of dead wood. And normally you would say we would make the front out of this part. What's possible because here you can see the live vein. Uh, but here as well, at the actual front in Japan, you see that's quite a beautiful tree and here we have some live vein as well and here as well. So what we have done is the tree was bigger than here. We, or Marco Invernizzi first did it actually, uh, tormented this part to contract it here and bent this part here. So we have this movement as well, what you can see over here. And in future, this will get bigger and more beautiful as well. So it will complement the tree. Then here we had the old apex of the tree and it was a quite a big tangent. And that one was split down into this direction. And this was a straight long gin going up as well. And with, uh, with towel, wet towel, al aluminum foil and wire, we have bent this uh, straight gin into something with, with a more beautiful shape. Then it had the first styling with Marco and Venizzi and the second styling I did a couple of weeks ago. So it's a rough styling and this foliage cloud is already quite nice, but the rest needs to grow a lot. So that's why I left these runners on the tree. And here, this one needs to grow a lot more to here so that we will have a more balanced tree. And because the sibling or the brother of, of the other one is already quite a balanced, beautiful tree, I want to make the other one into a more dramatical style or shape of tree. Kishu junipers are from a colder part in Japan and it's now an ideal time to work on them. When I got this tree from Japan, the tree was not that vigorous. So I've uh, kept it for one year and just let it grow out. The only thing what I have done is I have cleaned uh, the bark of these parts so that we have one beautiful thick vein over here that goes to these two branches 
and one beautiful vein over here that goes to this beautiful branch with beautiful movement. Now we're going to decide what our front will be. So this could be a possibility with our first branch here. We don't know yet what we will be doing with this and this can turn into the apex. But you need to know that this tree is uh, first styling and that the tree needs to develop a little bit more in future. Yeah. Um, from my opinion here, we have a very beautiful base and you can see this part of the life vein quite good and here as well a little bit. So around here, the tree is most, uh, most dramatical and more interesting. Uh, the thing what we need to do is this foliage needs to come a little bit closer to the trunk. So we will bend this one with a bending jack little by little closer to the trunk. Also here is a very beautiful gin, but it snapped a little bit. And we have a beautiful uh, solution for this. If you take wood glue, uh, or two co component glue is also a possibility. And you add it in the snap, or where it break, then you can Here it's coming. Then it, the wood stays harder against each other and then it's better. Um, I need to find a piece to press it in a little bit so that, it's, that it will go into the inside. Okay, a little bit from the other side as well. Afterwards, you can make it more beautiful and remove the unnecessary glue a little bit with some sandpaper. Okay, like this. And now I'm going to take some grafting tape to hold this piece of wood together very firmly until the glue is is dried out. Okay, now it's holding and when it's dried out, we can remove the grafting tape. After we can make it a little bit clean and afterwards we can put some gin liquid on this beautiful dead wood. Now, the most important thing what we're going to do is this branch needs to be here. Yes, more or less. Uh, so with a bending jack, we will bend this part more to that part. So. You have to be careful that no branches will be or no branches will get hurt by this procedure. So I'm using the deadwood only. And piece by piece the deadwood is going to right. Bit by bit we're going to bend it a little bit more. So the the fibers are going to tear a little bit and come closer together a little bit. Bit by bit we're going to bend this branch closer to the trunk and I can or I can do it the natural way and let it split by just bending it piece by piece and little by little because they're going to contract and expand um, or I can help it a little bit with using a branch splitter or a root cutter to make the life vein or to cut here more or less. So that will already be split a little bit. But I like it to be more natural. So little by little, I'm going to bend it more down. But we need to be very careful. Okay, we take a break, we rest a little bit. 
the wood is getting back together again and then we can bend it a little bit more. So by using this technique you can carefully bend little by little and then you see these cracks appearing and then you're no, you know you're doing a good job and you can bend a little bit more and more and more and more until you're at the desirable uh, stage or desirable position. So this is quite important. I'm going to bend a little bit more and as I'm as this branch is going more down you see that it's going to split more and more and it's not going to split in the direction of the lifing only into this length and that's what we need and that's what's important so bit by bit I'm going to bend it more and more and eventually you can hear it snapping a little bit or you, you hear these small cracks. But when you're at the end phase, then you hear a little bit of bigger snap. And then you're into the right position or the, the right, then you know that you need to stop. I will tell it like that, or I will say it like that. Um, because then you need to wait. Because otherwise it will completely snap off. Okay, so did you hear that? So this is the thing that we know that we need to stop at the moment. Uh, but it's still not in the direction of the live vein. So actually I think we can even go a little bit further as well. Okay. Okay. The branch has come a long way, we've banded very closer to the trunk and that was what I have in mind for this tree. That looks or resembles a, bit, a little bit like those Monterey cypresses in LA or these Taiwanese junipers in nature in, in Taiwan. Uh, now we need to anchor it so that we can remove this banding jack and we always do that with with copper wire. Here is a steady piece of dead wood where we can apply it to or secure it to like this and like that. Okay. I always make these kinds of things because this we can use to tighten it a little bit more and better. If you can see. Okay. Okay. I'm going to use this one. so that it will not look like a mess and we have one beautiful guy wire okay Eventually I don't think we're going to use this part because we can make the tree out of the apex and the first branch. What we need to do in future is we need to grow some new branches out. So we're starting with the bones of this tree. And what I want to do is I want to make a tree where the flow goes to that way. And we can make balance by using a bigger pot in future or a much higher pot because this is kind of a bunjing style tree, but a natural bunjing style tree. Um, here, is some dead wood as well and I want to bend this apex more down and to this side. Why? We have a be very beautiful tangent over here and this is very important for me to show, 
to look like these Monterey cypresses. I have these rooting cutters and I'm going to try to split the life vein here or to split it from the dead wood so we can bend it into that direction but I need to be very careful because this line of live vein and dead wood is very close and it's easy to snap so I'm going to wiggle a little bit without harming the live vein okay Now I'm going to try if I can This is not easy guys but And here we have this piece of wood as well. So it will be easier to remove this piece of that wood here. So we can bend this part more there. As you can see, it's already easier to bend it that direction. Um, instead, I'm even changing my mind because this is quite a nice piece because the dead wood is almost until the end of this part. And I think it, it will look, uh, it will be an extra bonus point in the design of this tree. So I'm just going to make a guy wire here and bend this apex more to this side, little by little. Here we have a piece of dead wood and we're going to apply a guy wire over there. And because we need to bend it down a little bit, I'm going to use this part to bend it to. Then it comes closer to the first branch as well. And that's very important. like this and bit by bit we're going to bend it closer to this part I need to be very careful because of the split it's at the moment a little bit fragile but we didn't hit any severe parts of the vein so when the vein is going to get bigger in future, this part will heal and become bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger. It's a, it's a little bit like when you break your bones, your bones get stronger because they, they heal. Okay, a little break and then we can bend it a little bit more. Now what you can see is that this part doesn't really uh, fit with the tree. Um, I know we need to have a first branch and a um, counterbalance branch and in the future we will have it on this tree but we will create it from this apex. So we're going to wire a, tr a branch like here so that the branch will go to into that, that direction. And we also need to have a back branch and we can have a back branch like here and a back branch from here, from the apex that goes into this direction. So what we will do is we will have a tree that where the flow goes to this side and where the, but the tree will be more compact. So what we'll be, we will be doing is we're going to cut this piece away and this will turn into a beautiful gin because this contracts uh, with the movement of the trunk what's quite nice so because we have this one this will be most beautiful and these we can make sh or shorten a little bit like that okay then I can remove the bark and create a beautiful 
piece of dead wood here. And here is also some bark on, and we need to remove it so we can see these beautiful gins over there as well. So we have a beautiful Boonjin kind of wine swapped uh, Kishu Juniper. So these are tools from uh, Hungary or Slovenia. Now I need to lie about it. Uh, from BEFF tools. And they're very sharp and very, very nice to use to make dead wood and to clean the dead wood. As you can see, very sharp as well, handmade tools. Now we can make a branch selection and we can make foliage cloud. So my idea is to cut down the most, the dead parts and the ugly branches that I don't need because there are already a lot of, there is already a lot of dead wood in this tree. So I'm good, going to cut these ones off. Also the ones that growing, the foliage that grows into quatches that I'm going to remove to create a beautiful, more, more beautiful structure. And then I can start wiring this branch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one small apex out of this one. This will be a first foliage cloud here, but first I need to wire it. So that's what I will be doing now. This one I can wire together with this one. If that one's wired, I can remove the foliage that's growing down to create a more beautiful foliage cloud. Here's some more foliage I can remove as well. Okay, super. I always start with wiring the first branch and then I can wire the other ones. Also, every time when you wire, you need to think in which direction your branch needs to go to. And this branch needs to go to, to this direction, so I need to follow the way where I need to wire it to. Okay. Then when I've decided that, I can remove unnecessary foliage. Foliage that's growing down. And that's ugly. And also there are berries on it and they take a lot of energy from the tree, so we're going to remove those as well. down we're going to remove like this the berries we can remove if we have a lot we can make gin out of it Also, these ones, you can see the difference. This, these are healthy buds and they're nice and green, bluish. 
These ones are yellow and very small and uh, not that big. So these take a lot of energy away as well and we need to remove them as well. Like that. The first branch is styled. We have a first branch over here and here a small little apex. This one needs to develop a little bit better in future, but the bones are set. Now we can start with this one. As you can see, we have a nice twisting position here and here this branch goes to here as well. So I want to make it a little bit free that we can see this curve. And here we're going to make the apex and some branches need to grow out. So this will be uh, a rough shaping of how the tree will look in future yes the thing what i need to do now is i need to clean the branches from from foliage that are growing downward then i need to wire the first structure i can put uh, movement into these these uh, branches and i need to fan everything out and if i do that i need to create a back branch that will grow one day around this side over here i need to create a branch that grows a little bit here and I need to create a branch or wire a branch out into this direction and that's important because we also need to create a counterbalance uh, that's very important as well so we will be setting the main structure and then the tree will be finished and uh, then we have a beautiful natural looking juniper that will only get better in, in the future and this is already starting to become a very beautiful tree uh, that will maybe stay in my collection because it also has some emotional value and it reminds me of the trip that I did in Los Angeles when I had to give workshops over there. Uh, so this is also an important value for me. This is an important branch that needs to grow out to here. So the only thing what I will be doing is I will be removing these branches that are growing down. As you can see, until we have a nice, flat, beautiful structure. So everything that's growing down will be removed. As you can see here, these fruits or these berries, they take a lot of energy, so we're going to remove them as well. And very important is that we're not going to cut this one because we need to create thickness and we need to create growth. And these shoots, they will 
they, they are our starting engine for next year to create some good growth into this part. Also, what's important is our branches need to grow alternating. So one here, one here, so this one can go. Yes, if you have this one here, then the next one should be here. Next one here, next one here, and that way, if you see here, this one here, this one here, this one here, this one here. So that's pretty important. Also create some open spaces into it because light and air need to grow into it as well. See here, we have a lot of branches here and it's important to simplify. We have here a very nice point that can become the apex. And this one is crossing with that apex. So this one we're going to cut here and we have more open space. This also depends that this branch over here, we can wire more down so it can grow lower into here. As this one is growing more to here, we can have one foliage cloud over here, but we have too many branches here as well. So we're going to clean them out. And uh, let me check. This one is too strong and this growth needs to, uh, needs to be suppressed a little bit. So we have one foliage cloud that become here. These are growing down. This is growing down. More or less like this. Uh, this one we can cut as well. So with this one we can make a beautiful foliage cloud as you can see. Look. And this one can go down. Can go here. This one we can remove as well. And this one as well. Now I can wire this one and bend this one into position. So as you can see, we're heading our way to the top. We have wired this small branch first and then we set this one out. So we're setting the bones first. This branch needs to grow a lot more. So this uh, foliage shoot, this will grow more. So this branch will get bigger. We create some movement into it from up and down and up and down and left to right. So this needs to create more volume in future. Then we have a little foliage cloud here, one here. This one needs to grow out more to that side uh, in future than here. And now we're starting to wiring our apex. So uh, this is the beginning part of the new design of this tree. And the tree is starting to look quite okay. And uh, it's not a very typical or classical uh, Japanese design, uh, but we have used bonsai influences to style this tree. We have cleaned the old ugly foliage out. We have uh, cut our branches 
that you have a primary branch and that it splits into two and two and two and two and two. What's very important, um, now in future the tree needs to grow out. So uh, probably we will repot the tree because uh, the soil where it's in is already decomposed quite a lot. So, um, uh, so it will get a better substrate, bims and akadama, but also bigger grains because the tree still needs to grow a lot. After, when the tree uh, starts to grow a lot, it's important that these piece parts are, are starting to grow. And then we need to create in future and in time wabi-sabi and or mochikomi as they say as well and this means that a tree looks older what's very important with this design is that i want the foliage to grow uh, more up so you can see the branch structures a lot better and this way we create by letting the tree grow out a little bit more but also grow it very strongly because why the branches need to grow uh, or need to hold the foliage uh, without any wire and this is something that is very important uh, and it's very important for every bonsai actually so and afterwards then we can put it into a smaller grain of substrate because we need to or we want to create a more better ramification and this is also something important now i'm setting the structure of the apex and then we're finished for today or except for cleaning the dead wood, of course. Um, this tree we could already put in a pot that would suit with the tree, or we can say um, we're going to use a, a training spot because it's better for the growth of the tree. And that's also very, a very important thing. finished with setting the bones as you can see we have a beautiful crown here that needs to be divided in with more open spaces in the future but we have set the structure uh, we have set the bones this one needs to grow out a little bit more to there to create more uh, balance into the tree so to create a bigger counterbalance balance branch this one needs to go to here there's only one small problem that I think this one needs to go a little bit into that direction so with a piece of guy wire we will bend that one a little bit into that direction and that already looks or start to looks a bit better from neglected material that uh, is quite difficult we made something beautiful out of it and this is only the start of 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 the new beginning of this tree um, because this tree will develop and become a very 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 good tree in its own way. It looks quite natural, it's something that you could find in nature in Taiwan and in, in, in the mountains. I'm not uh, quite there yet what kind of pot I'm going to use. It's possible to use a beautiful Nanban or a Hokido pot like a lotus kind of pot. That would be quite nice, but maybe it also would be nice to put it on some kind of slab or rock together with some other accent plants with it but maybe that can attract too much, um, too much uh, from the tree because the tree is already very dramatic. And in my opinion, sometimes it's better to use a very simple pot with a tree that's very dramatic. So in future, we need to grow these things out, then the tree can grow. Uh, it's very important to fertilize it very heavily so one day the branches can hold the foliage from its own and to create mochikomi and finer, a little bit of finer foliage and a lot of more ramification with, yeah, with a beautiful design for this tree. 
So yeah, it's not the typical Japanese styling, it's something in between. We use Japanese techniques um, and we made something beautiful out of it, something very natural. I'm quite happy with the design. I hope you are as well. So because we already sandblasted the deadwood, we only need to make the deadwood a little bit wet. So, so that the water will attract into the deadwood and then when the deadwood is moist uh, we can start to put lime sulfur on it. Also I'm going to take the crafting tape off from the dead branch because I think after resting for one day uh, the glue is now into it's now settled into the deadwood and uh, it will be hardened off, so. Okay. Yes, super. If you can see, the deadwood is better attached right now. 